Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture on ritual vases. And this unit's creative clay work is to complete your own personalized ritual vase. And it will represent a contemporary perspective. In other words, your ritual vase will represent something from your life experience and perspective. But in order to start this, we'll be viewing unique historical vases as our inspiration, and specifically pre-Columbian ritual vases. What does pre-Columbian mean? Well, pre-Columbian is a really broad term that refers to an era of cultural development in the Americas before European conquest, right? Now, Columbus came, in other words, um, before Columbus arrived in 1492 and the dramatic consequences that followed. There is evidence that there was other European uh, brushes with the American continent, but these didn't have that dramatic effect as it did when uh, the Spanish came and all that followed. What it was before 1492 included a broad spectrum of pre-existing and highly developed cultures from Alaska all the way down to the tip of South America. I mean, this is a huge swath of land with hundreds of many, many, probably thousands of distinct different cultures that were all um, amazingly developed. And for our purposes, we'll consider cultural artifacts from two tangential regions and epochs, which are considered to be two of the most um, obviously developed um, as far as art and social development. It doesn't mean they necessarily were on a social uh, basis, but in, in terms of what they built and that kind of thing. And that is in Mesoamerica, and specifically the Maya, and in northwestern uh, South America, in the Andes, and that's uh, Inca culture, and the predecessors of Inca culture, and the predecessors of uh, this region. Okay, specifically, the Maya and the Moche. Now, um, the Mayas in Mesoamerica, and Mesoamerica refers to southern southern Mexico all the way down to through Central America to uh, the, the tip of the southern tip of, of Panama, where it enters the um, South American continent. Anyways, this whole area is Mesoamerica, and right next to it, all the way coming down here, is where the Inca civilization was. Um, the Mayas in Mesoamerica were the predecessors of the Aztecs, and the the Moches down here, the Moche culture, were the predecessors of what we know better as the Incas. All right. Specifically, we'll consider ritual vases depicting three different subject matter. Animals, figures, and busts. We're going to try to keep it simple. There are so much ceramics and so many different ways we can go, but we're going to talk about these three things. You're going to choose one, and you're going to focus on that and vibe on it and make something unique. Right. Your task will be to choose one of these genres and translate the subject matter to reflect contemporary content. In other words, something relevant to your life. Okay, let's get started. Animal vases. Let's just look at a bunch of examples and think how this might relate to you in your life, right? Um, in pre-Columbian art, um, specifically Mayan and Moche, uh, they had both cultures had pets as animals, and sometimes these vases were just simple homages, right? And another term for homage is reverential regard, things that they thought were, they valued, things that they used for food, or things that they had around, they appreciated their um, characteristics. Also, they felt that a lot of things had magical content, and so they, when they made ceramic objects, they wanted to somehow um, contain these animistic powers um, to contain them and to dispense them potentially, something that they wanted to possess, let's say. Um, animism, the definition is, and this is something that was prevalent, especially in Mayan and Moche culture, was a belief in supernatural powers that organize and animate the material world, including plants, animals, inanimate objects, you know, crystals, rocks, um, waterfalls, etc and natural phenomenon, storms and all that kind of stuff. The world was animated by supernatural powers and their artwork reflected this, okay? And this could be playful and sometimes not. It could be, you know, wow, it could be a little fierce or foreboding. You decide and you decide how that might apply to you. 
It could be something as simple as a frog or erotic frogs, or in the case of a moche culture, specific frogs in which elixir was extract, extracted from the rainforest and combined with the frogs, you know, venoms and those kind of things or, or parts of it to create um, hallucinogens and things like that. Or beasts of burden, for example, the llama or amorous llama. I mean, we don't hang out with llamas much, but what other animals do we hang out with? <laughs> or the overfed house pets, which we know all about, right? That look comically current, like send us a little, little help over here from the, home, from the Simpsons. Um, to food sources, and we don't, we're not in such close contact with our food sources, but other cultures have been, specifically the Maya and the Moche, like deer, along with images of hunting seasons, right? Or the expressive nature of animals, like, um, and the stately natures, like these monkeys, very human-like, right? Or aggressive natures, uh, like these felines, and cats were really a big part of, um, of these cultures. Um, cats showing, uh, taking on challenges, or gobbling them, right, with the snakes. Or, um, the most revered animals, which was also a cat, was and the most feared was the jaguar, right? Um, presented as being very fierce, having godlike powers, being poised, and also was depicted in various you know, states like at rest, or whimsical even, funny little jaguars or cats. There was also seemingly fantastic animals, like what the heck was that? And it's hard for anthropologists to figure out what they were depicting in some cases. In some cases, they knew what they were depicting, and they depicted them as fierce or foreboding, like the bat here. So, an option, optional content for your vase might be to illustrate an animal trait you feel humans emulate, perhaps like an anthropomorphic being, right? Like an entity that's part animal and part human. The word anthropomorphic means the attribution of human traits, emotions, or intentions to non-human entities. And this is something that was evident in the art of the Mayas and the Moche. Right? It could be confrontational, or it could be groovy, like, you know, hey man, it's a drum circles of uh, singing, I don't know, jackals or something. Or monkey dudes sharing a fatty. I mean, there's a broad spectrum of anthropomorphizing things. Or royal buckman here with a scepter and a soul patch. Uh, or empowered and puffed up buckman. Or buckman con contemplating his navel, sort of. Or symbolic warriors. There's many symbolic anthropomorphic creatures in these cultures, like this anthropomorphic fox. Which, which. Or other symbolic entities, like this praying iguana dude with a aviary sidekick, which I think is kind of funny, but who knows what the real intent was of this content. Okay, so that's animals. There are also human figures. And in these cultures, there are a broad range of human figures. I'm just going to show you a brief sampling, but they're from the everyday citizen to the more, you know, those with more perspective. This could be an illustration for a psychology book, right? You know, two different ideas, perspectives, personalities, etc. To, the, to common everyday people doing common everyday things like the water bearer or a drummer or a hunter, an elder, a guy planning his afternoon <laughs> to Mr. Peanut. I mean, what's up with Mr. Peanut here? I mean, some of them were funny and just commonplace from homages of abundance, right? So like a mother and child alive to other more foreboding preoccupations like mother and child not so loud, all right? Or treacherous kind of uh, dangers like falling prey to Mr. Jaguar here. Poor guy was in the wrong place in the jungle at the wrong time, right? And there are also um, figures with elevated status like holy and sacred lords. And lords or rulers were crazy, important, and godlike, right? Also shaman or warriors. And all of these three um, dealt often harshly with lesser individuals, especially from other tribes and warring tribes and who became captives. And, well, how can you tell they're captives? Well, it's all about the ropes and the bondage. And there's a zillion of these um, with who were often fed to jaguars or decapitated. 
And <clears throat> but unless you like the horror genre, there are a zillion other adaptations for a contemporary figure that's not so grim, but it was definitely a part of both the Maya and the Moche cultures, this kind of practice. Okay, last, let's consider busts. Some of these busts are, and you know, that's part of the human figure, but we're talking about specifically the bust like you just made in the funk uh, unit. Some of these are very abstract and fantastic and uh, some are simple and cartoon-like renderings, and uh, some the human figures are stylized uh, or dealize, you know, dealing with issues like life and death. Uh, on the right here is actually a a, a skull and, and a living and a, and a skull, and but most typically these busts represented specific people considered uniquely important. And that's a little bit different than the figures. Most of these um, these busts were specifically people with power. Um, they were they were even considered in some of their cases to be godlike. Um, manifest and they had manifestations of absolute power. Here's the fox again, the fox warrior god, which we saw just a couple seconds ago, and also like the revered shaman, who had all these supernatural powers that normal people didn't have, right? or the holy god king. And the top of the universe, the sun king, was the most important thing in both Mayan and uh, Moche culture. Re and they were always rendered with dignity, incredibly well rendered. They had detail and symbols of authority, right? So that's a sample overview. Your job, your task, is to further research and choose one subject from these, animal, figure, or bust, and create a contemporary translation, okay? This will be further outlined in this week's R&D, and you'll research a little bit more about the cultures, both Mayan and Moche, and I suggest that you go online and look up some examples of both, and we'll take it from there. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye.